Yeah, we're continuing with cricket here on the Sportsmax Zone on this Friday. Cricket West Indies, CWI, and the West Indies Players Association, WIPA, signed a new memorandum of understanding inside the Sportsmax studios in Kingston, Jamaica, on Thursday evening. The major provisions include improved prize money and match fees at the regional and international levels, including for women cricketers to achieve parity with the men by October 2027. Issues concerning no objection certificates for players and the potential both CWI and franchises to award multi-year contracts. Cricket West Indies president Dr. Kishore Shallow has embraced the partnership that he believes will enhance the game and reward excellence. West Indies cricket is undeniable and this is not blindful optimism by any means. And today I present to you some of the reasons why I share that sentiment which, is, which has been echoed by many across the region. Over the last few months, we have been engaged at Cricket West Indies with negotiations with WIPA, West Indies Players Association, to chart the course for a more inclusive and result-oriented approach in a memorandum of understanding. I can report that we conclude this, these negotiations no different than we started months ago with the best interests of cricket at heart. And so I'm delighted to share with you five of these and later on you will hear from President Wavell Hines who would elaborate on some of these. One, enhanced team price, money and individual player rewards, potential for multi-year retainers contract, increased men's match fees, retention policy for overseas domestic tournaments, and of course, some may say the best for last, equality for women's cricketers in our region. These provisions underscore our commitment to creating an environment where players strive and West Indies cricket continues to shine on the global stage. I'm quite happy to say that we are still not, uh, we do not conclude here as Cricket West Indies and WIPA, but we will continue to work effortlessly to update the following framework, fitness and conditioning, selection policy, and NOCs. As we embark on this transformative journey for Cricket West Indies, Yes, and the West Indies Players Association president, Waver Hines, who played 45 tests and 119 one-day internationals for the West Indies, stressed the, stressed the inclusive nature of the process that led to the final document. The of our players are important, the rights and the benefits of our players are important, and certainly we did not come to an agreement without the involvement of our um, esteemed players. We have a player advisory committee led and chaired by um, Barbaid, former Barbados captain, or maybe still captain of the Barbados team, Ms. Shakira Selman, who is also a director of the West Indies Players Association. I want to thank her and her team for their contributions. Captain Haley Matthews made her um, contribution in a very significant way, and so did Captain Ravman Powell. So we had an all-inclusive um, approach where we had members from the AG and the last annual general meeting in Antigua who have nominated their respective um, supporting groups from the player group to join us at the negotiating table. We are looking forward to this. There are different um, increases in the different bands which most players would like to hear. And we are also very grateful that in what we are doing, we are also about gender equality and gender equity. And as such, we have managed to craft an agreement that will see between 2024 to 2027, where our women cricketers will be on par with the men in terms of their, their payment. So it is indeed a great time for the West Indies Players Association. It is a good time for West Indies cricket. And we also look forward to making sure that from the regional level up, we are doing so. To go with that for our regional women, we are looking to have at least six women contracted as professionals at a regional level. And we look to, to grow those numbers in a very incremental way as we get to the end of the contract or the MOU in 2027. So. Yeah, all that happening live in the Sportsmax studios on Thursday evening. The CWI CEO, Johnny Grave, spoke about the huge rewards for individuals and teams. Yeah, no, I think all the, um, uh, the sort of the headlines from this deal are remarkable. They are historic. I think we've, we've got over the period of the next four years a framework to pay 
um, you know, upwards of 2.5 million US dollars to our international players in prize money, and a similar amount for the for the uh, regional players as well. So there's a real focus that we put on this in terms of rewarding performances. Uh, we want to have a, a structure where the best players who perform individually and collectively um, benefit the most. And so the move towards increased prize money, the move to reward players who get into the starting 11 rather than just sort of coast in squads uh, has all been part of a strategic move to make the system tougher, uh, reward performances and, and get a real focus on winning. Yeah, so um, it was a great evening in the Sportsmax studios on, on Thursday. Um, some technical issues <laughs> prevented us from having a live show with it. But great to have these um, decision makers in our studios yesterday talking about some important projects. Yeah, and I think it's a really positive move. It's a good way forward, especially for the men and women cricketers. For me, you know, because Karishma is a part of the Windies women's setup, I'm always looking forward to see what's happening with the women. You know, I'm always championing to ensure that the ladies get the same opportunities as the men. And I'm always very vocal about that. Like, it's no secret. So yesterday, to see the different advancements that will be taking place, I know the ladies are very, very happy because I had a conversation with my sister about it. And I was like, she was breaking it down to me as to what exactly would the benefits be for them. And they're very happy. You know, they feel as if finally they're getting to some sort of equality. And I think it's a good feeling. I know um, Cricket West Indies, they are working to ensure that in time, the ladies will be uh, getting equal payment just like the men. So it's going to take some time, but I know the ladies are very satisfied and they're looking forward to these advancements. Yeah, as Wendo, as the Honorary Secretary of the West Indies Players Association pointed out, um, they had robust discussions with Cricket West Indies. So um, there was a certain level of unity that we saw yesterday when all the gentlemen were here. But uh, as Wayne Lewis sort of pointed out, or as Wayne Lewis pointed out, um, they had some serious discussions. They did not always agree on everything, um, of course, which you would expect at the negotiating table. Um, having said that, I'm happy to hear Mariah say that the women cricketers are quite happy with the provisions here in the document. I hope as well that the male players, for the most part, will be pleased as well with what has come out of this MOU. There are a few of the things that really strike me, Lance and Mariah. One of them, and I put the question to Wava Hines, is the retainer contract. So all retainers will be on hold once a NOC is issued for an overseas domestic franchise tournament. I try to get further details or, or specifics or give specific scenarios. Um, Mr. Heinz kind of stepped away from that. He didn't want to go into that, which I can understand. Um, but that is, that is quite interesting because now for the first time, a player who is contracted to Cricket West Indies could still potentially request and get a no objection certificate. But what would happen in a situation like that is that they would not be paid by Cricket West Indies right. in that period. So that for me is an interesting yeah. development. And I just want to add before we wrap, of course there's room for improvement. But for me where the ladies are concerned, and I'm just speaking um, in relation to that aspect of the MOU, it's a step in the right direction because we heard from them saying, you know, the minimum fee that the ladies would receive when they now started to play cricket. For me, it's a big step in the right direction. Of course, there's always room for improvement. And with time, I'm hoping that whichever Cricket West Indies body um, takes the place of this one right now in years to come, they can have something substantial to build on. Yeah. And that's so important. Yeah. And I would just like to emphasize, though, that we want to have a, a robust West Indies Players Association because the fallout from the India boycott in 2014 had uh, triggered uh, a departure of a lot of the international cricketers from the West Indies Players Association. And over time, we'd like to get from... Uh, Messrs. Lewis and Hines, the, the percentage and the volume 
of uh, current international players who are actually a part of WIPA because we did say we did see a decade ago where a lot of the international players had had left WIPA and and uh, WIPA what would not have been representing a huge yeah. chunk a lot of, of the senior players senior players yes yeah. yeah. so I, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that in the future we will be seeing the players embracing WIPA and its relationship with Cricket West Indies so there can be harmony going forward as we try to rebuild West Indies cricket. We go to break. Still more to come on the Sportsmax Zone. Back in a moment.